if you wouldn't mind quickly just introducing yourself um, with your name, pronouns, any other information you'd like to share. Okay, sure. So my name is Laura Tadena. I use she, her pronouns, and um, I am the equity and inclusion consultant at the Texas State Library. And uh, kind of something unique about me is that I have worked as a school librarian, an academic librarian, and now most recently at a special library. So um, I kind of have a unique viewpoint of librarianship, um, and I've been able to kind of bring all my experience to one place that that really builds on my strength. So that's that's kind of the fun part about me. And I would like consider myself also like a third career librarian, like a in a when I started, you know, after graduating, I I worked in architecture as an architecture consultant for a little bit in program like facility programming. Um, and then I worked in education at like when the recession hit. So I worked as a Texas public educator for about maybe six, six years before transitioning to become a school librarian. Um, yeah, so, and then I became a librarian. So I feel like this is my kind of third career in life. And I don't know, who, know, who knows where the future holds. <laughs> you talked a little bit about your career background. So what is sort of your educational background? Yeah, so um, my undergraduate degree is in architecture, um, which is pretty cool because it really provided me like a foundational design background. And so much of librarianship is soft skills that are transferred from lived experience and kind of just random work experience you pick up. It's like all of the information coming together. Uh, so my um, architecture background has really helped form how I move through space, like both the physical space as well as the digital space. Um, and then also um, just kind of helps me in regards with like organization of information and form versus function, things like that. So um, I then also switched and got alternatively certified so that I can teach. And so I do also have um, a certificate to be able to teach like K through 12 or something like that. I don't even remember what I have, like middle school up. Um, but my education experience provided me the opportunity to learn diff different teaching skills that oftentimes librarianship forget that we do like we you know teach people how to access information um how to find resources in some ways curriculum design and instructional design is really built off of my background in education because i've been able to understand how people learn and how people um you know experience different educational settings and um and so that's another piece of my education that has been pretty formative to librarianship. Um, what kind of got me where I am today was I was working as a math teacher and I had been teaching for, you know, maybe five years at the time. And I had been working as a department chair and one of the biggest struggles all my math teachers were struggling with was our students weren't able to read. Um, and so I started working with the school campus librarian at the time to help incorporate literacy strategies into our math curriculum. And then like most librarians, she's like, you know, have you thought about librarianship? Uh, so when I entered librarianship, I really entered it with the idea that I was going to be focused on school libraries. Uh, and at the time, there was a shortage in Texas, so I was able to work as a school librarian while working on my um, master's in library science, and I went through uh, the University of North Texas program. Um, and, you know, I, I worked as a school librarian for a few years. It was a great opportunity. Uh, I probably would still be doing it today had I not decided to apply for a different job. So I was in one district, I decided to apply to go to a different district. And I stumbled upon a diversity resident position at the University of Texas. And so I ended up getting both jobs, getting another school librarian job and the University of Texas job. And I went with the University of Texas job because of what it would expose me to. And it was in that position that I really really was able to see the vast inequities in access, education, 
educational opportunities, uh, resources. And so um, in my diversity resident position, that's where I really honed in on um, equity and inclusion and diversity issues, which were already being talked about in K-12, you know, for many years. And so um, figuring out, seeing how organizations work and seeing, you know, being in a primarily white institution, in a primarily white library, serving, trying to serve a diverse population was really where I switched gears and wanted to focus on more of the EDI work. And so that's where I am today at the Texas State Library, um, which is interesting because when I was initially asked to be part of this, I wouldn't have considered my work to be digital libraries, but I, we have been doing so much remote work, so much digital work that really are, it is a, a mindset shift to begin to think, yes, even our, our space, the work that we do is a digital library. We have um, an archive of webinars and trainings. We have web pages devoted to you know, resource guides and informational guides. We, we create training videos. And so we have like a YouTube playlist. Um, and so really what has gotten me here is really thinking about how to get the most information out to the communities that we don't often reach and really trying to work to bridge some of the gaps. Um, so that's kind of like a long wind of how I ended up where I am today. <laughs> Oftentimes we hear like, and that was a big intimidating factor was that I didn't have, you know, a literature background. I don't own any cats, um, you know, so I don't necessarily fit into this idea of what a library is. And I think that's kind of something to think about when we do think about digital libraries. It's, it's not just a library that's digital, like really begin to think about how we're changing our profession and where our audience is and how this concept of digital libraries is meeting, is bridging that gap, is the, is the pathway, is the tool that we're using to, to relay that information. So what is your current job description and what does like the day-to-day -day job look like for you? And then mm -hmm. kind of second part of that is what kind of digital work are you doing? My job, uh, I am situated within our continuing education di division. So our division is, I'm sorry, library development and networking. And so there's kind of two big pieces to it. There's the continuing education side, and then there's the development networking side where we have grants, our interlibrary loan program. Um, and a lot of the, the whole function of it is, is to support Texas libraries with resources and training material and, and kind of whatever they need to be set up for success. And so my role is the equity and inclusion consultant. I was initially hired as an inclusive services consultant, but the work has very much shifted. Um, and so a good portion of my job includes providing the training and the resources and access to information around equity and inclusion, accessibility. Um, and then another piece of it is working internally with our library um, to help kind of push some um, EDI initiatives. And that's kind of been something that has developed over the past year. Uh, so that's kind of the, the big the big kind of broad topics of what I do. And, and within my work, I work both locally. So, you know, at, a, at within our state library, but also across Texas public libraries, and then also nationally. So there's, I'm involved in kind of multiple EDI groups. And so a typical day for me would be something like this, where I'm meeting with somebody kind of talking about my work or talking about a project that I've been on or in some type of work group where we're working towards um, something. Uh, and so it, 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 that's kind of the nice thing about my job is that no day really looks the same unless I have strategically planned for it to look a certain way, right? Like I, I want a day where I'm only going to be working on my web page, or I want a day where I'm I'm just working on blogs or or whatever. Um, but typically, it's it's random meetings with either people in Texas or kind of people across the nation. 
And some of the biggest goals in my current job are, are to push um, kind of EDI initiatives um, or EDIA, which is equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility initiatives. Um, I'm on one work group where uh, it is uh, a cohort of other individuals in libraries who are tasked with doing EDIA work um, in their libraries. And so we as a group are working where we have a grant right now and we're trying to bring in more people who are doing this work and we're trying to kind of consolidate a lot of the work that we're already doing very separately and kind of create one big piece for public libraries or for kind of generally any libraries. Um, and then Texas, our goal is to to get some training out so that we could begin to kind of see more inclusive libraries or help libraries recognize that they're already doing inclusive work and and maybe they just need additional support here and there to to kind of get to the next level would be the biggest i would say current goals and like right now i'm i am really trying to get out a web page for my work um, we have kind of each have like specialty or expertise areas. And so I'm hoping, I've been trying to get this webpage out for a while. So that's been the biggest kind of digital goal that I have right now. I guess in the past, we would have done a lot of training um, that would have just been in person, you know, workshop type setting. We would travel to, you know, the areas, different areas in, in Texas and, you know, provide whatever training that we're doing and then come back and, and then continue to cor correspond via email or something. But what we're starting to do is we're still doing our webinars, we're still doing our trainings, but now we're doing kind of hybrid sessions where our staff are in person and we're virtual uh, and we're trying to provide the training, but also have an engaging session. So that's been really interesting because part of that too is the continued learning that happens after the training. And so it involves getting resources, getting collective or collaborative working notes, um, using tools that, you know, one thing we always try to be mindful of is, you know, when we're putting on these trainings, who is our audience? What does their broadband look like? Like, will they even have uh, the bandwidth to host Zoom and show cameras without a uh, buffering? And so part of it too involves thinking critically about um, some of the digital divide that also happens within our profession and, and recognizing ways to, to begin to kind of resolve or support in those cases. Um, the other kind of big thing that I would think is changing is, is that collection of, of resources. And so we're start, we're, we're really trying to, to get the work that we're doing in one place. And part of Texas is that we are a public library, we are a public record. And so this information also needs to be freely available without any barriers to access that information. And so right now, for example, I'm working with other state libraries who are also working on internal EDI committees, and we're trying to get all those resources in one place so that as our state libraries or any library is deciding, you know what, I'm gonna start a committee. Okay, let's go to the committee folder. What information do we have? What examples do we already have? Or I'm gonna write a survey. What example surveys have already been published that we can kind of pull from? So it's kind of, again, bringing in this like collection of resources in one place that in the past would have probably just been a webinar with the PowerPoint and so now, or a web page. And so now it's really thinking about how do we have shared folders? How do we have um, collective notes? How can we compile all these different pieces from all these different agencies and organizations because every library is using something different. Not all libraries have a Google account not all libraries have SharePoint, not all libraries have Microsoft Word. And so really thinking about the tools, the access behind the tools and the barriers that may be present when we're developing and designing the resources that we're sharing. That's like always kind of on our forefront. And then on top of all that, making sure it's all accessible and meets accessibility standards. 
you've sort of alluded um, or mentioned this a little bit earlier, but thinking about sort of all of this different digital work that you do, like if someone asked you how you defined what a digital librarian is, Mm -hmm. um, what would you sort of what would your response be? I think in the past, I probably would have been like, well, someone that works with a digital library, like I would, it just would have been something kind of blanket like that. Like when I was at UT, I did some work with the Lilas Benson library to ingest like all the, this like digital collection of resources from, from Guatemala. And then like, in that sense, I probably would have considered myself a digital library then because I was working with digital material, you know, um, or once, you know, physical material now digitized. But now I think as we're changing and we're in in this big information age, I think a digital librarian is anybody that's working with digital material, anyone that's putting, collecting, curating resources to be accessed both physically and also digitally. But, you know, you are adding in that electronic resource sharing platform. So um, so I do think that digital libraries and digital librarians are are working electronically, uh, providing information that's available online. Um, and hopefully digital librarians are guided under like access for everybody, barrier free, uh, open access, uh, all those things hopefully are at that root so that we are providing information to everyone. Sort of in relation to that, how do you see digital librarianship continuing to change in the next like five to 10 years? Well, I think because of the pandemic, one of the things that has happened from it is that there has been a recognition of, oh yeah, not everyone has the same access. And so internet should be like it's not a utility like it is everybody should have access to that um and i think how it's going to change is it's it's going to be a continued push for more open resources less paywalls less barriers um and i think there's going to be a lot of struggle with that because it is hard to capitalize when things are open and freely available um and so i also think a big shift is you know, working within the current information structure we have, and we have misinformation, uh, interpreted information, potentially factual information. And so really honing in on our ability to evaluate sources and also critically question who these sources are, who is publishing this information, what authority or power do they have and what are they gaining from that information because I think a lot of what we share sometimes is potentially perpetuating a cycle of power and so I hope that there is a shift on providing kind of open information that's unbiased and um, and that we're able to evaluate these sources well. I don't know if I answered your question, but that's kind of <laughs> at least how I sit, see a shift in in my work, kind of really investigating the infrastructure behind what is what allows us to have digital libraries and um, and really working against current systems that continue to perpetuate in access. What do you think the LIS and MSIS program should be? teaching current students about digital libraries? And what advice would you have for students who are interested in pursuing this kind of nebulous digital library career? I would start kind of on the back end and say that, you know, really thinking about digital librarianship is in everybody's work. It's, I don't think it's gonna be siloed. I don't think you can be a youth services librarian without having some digital librarianship embedded into your work, or I don't think you're going to be able to do outreach without digital librarianship. The same way if you're working in an academic library, um, 
you know, you have lib guides, you have uh, research consultations or web pages or programming, and all of that is digital librarianship. And so I would hope that our programs are helping students really think about digital librarianship in a more broader transferable skills asset. Oftentimes people kind of think of the digital component or computers and it's scary, especially as more and more library programs shift towards becoming information science programs. Um, and, you know, really encouraging students to think how they are using already currently using digital skills, you know, they're on their phones, they're on social media, they're going to certain websites. And so how might they continue to do that? And the other piece of it too is, is to begin to, to teach digital librarianship with a critical lens and going back to teaching about the history of redlining uh, because there is a connection between redlining and also infrastructure. And so there's something called, I think it's called like re web redlining or um, internet redlining, what basically is where different communities have access, have multiple uh, avenues, like different internet providers that they can choose from that have competitive rates where other communities maybe that are lower income or less um, affluent may not have that competition. And so their rate may be incredibly high. And so they may not have access. And so teaching the digital school, you know, had to be a digital librarian, but also really thinking about how there is also this long history where there are people that don't have access. And so how do we begin to carve the path and transform our work so that it's no longer it's here, come to me, but I'm creating it and I'm taking it to you. And so how do we get our libraries, whether it's physical or digital, out of this area that we've only really encompassed and moving it forward and 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 working towards bridging the gap is my soapbox speech. I mean, uh, <laughs> um, that's I, that's what I would hope. And and part of it too, like within that context, like things that I wish I would have learned, like I learned about kind of the user experience and 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 like the the collection piece of that, like, you know, the retrieval piece, the information retrieval piece, but part of it also, I hope that when there are those heavily focused, you know, technical classes, we're also teaching about how within the user experience, there are like algorithms that we could be using or that we are implementing that could be creating barriers. Or I think there's like a book called like Algorith Algorithms of Oppression, which mm -hmm. is really good. Um, but just recognizing that, you know, and teaching students to really begin to think about how not every user is experiencing the same, the same experience and that how it can vary and, and how those variations can create barriers. What do you love about your job, about digital libraries, and what keeps you motivated to keep going in this field? So I have, I... What, what keeps me motivated is that there are a core amount of people, like I have some people that I work closely with and then also aspirational friends like outside of library land, you know, like in the nation that I just am in awe of because they're doing such great work and really changing the profession. Um, and so I think that's kind of what keeps me going is, is knowing that I am in some ways making a change and and am providing information in a way that people have access to it they get to see it otherwise you know maybe it wouldn't be there um and the thing that i like about my work is that i get to do a lot of outreach and i get to engage with communities in ways that maybe wouldn't you know we wouldn't have traditionally been doing and so um I'm going to continue to kind of keep pushing my barriers and um, and keep trying to get out there and and continue to provide the resources and information that people need. I like that I can find 
anything, right? Like what I don't like is that I can't find everything. Like I, when I worked at UT, oh my gosh, the access to the library is amazing. And as you, and I, I don't know who's watching this. I don't know how this is going to get transcribed. Take advantage of your library right now, because when you graduate, that library does not exist. Your library from there is your public library. Or if you decide to go back to get a PhD, like the main motivator for me to go back to school to get a PhD is so that I could get access to a university library right now. Um, I love my public library. Uh, I also I also have access to databases at TSLAC, but in no way does it compare to university access. And so the fact that the average person doesn't have access to those types of resources speaks to the world that we are currently living in. And what motivates me or what I love about libraries is, is the potential to have that for everyone. Um, and so that's what's keeping me motivated is getting, in a sense, not just like digital library, but all resources that libraries provide for everybody. Is there anything else um, that we didn't cover that you'd like to talk about in regards to digital libraries? Anything you really want people watching this video to know? You know, whoever's watching, you're going to be graduating soon. You're going to be going out in the profession, you know, continue to learn like your what you're being taught right now is a subset of what other individuals are finding important for you to know. And so if there's something that you want to know more about that you are interested in, there is probably a librarian already that is focused on that. And so find those networks, find those communities of people that are that are doing the type of work that you want to do, because that's what's going to help push you forward and continue to stay kind of in trend of what's happening. Um, and so that you're able to, you know, begin to design digital libraries and spaces proactively instead of reactively um, and, and really understand the communities that you're serving. Um, and also take advantage of your library right now because that's gonna go away eventually. So uh, use it, appreciate it. Uh, and hopefully design so that people can also have access to that.